The Little Common Sense Book of Investing by John C. Bogle. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel and I want to make self-growth normal. If you want to make self-growth normal, because I don't want to do it alone, and who doesn't want to make self-growth normal, then make sure to smash that like button. The author of this book, John C. Bogle, founder of Vanguard. R.I.P. to John C. Bogle, by the way. Uh, it, rest in peace. He died like a year ago. The Vanguard Group. Vanguard has over 5.3 trillion with a TR. With a, not with a B, not with an M, a TR. Trillion dollars in assets under management. It is the biggest provider of index funds and the second biggest provider of exchange traded funds, which doesn't, something about that doesn't really make sense because somewhere in this book, he kind of knocks uh, exchange trade funds. I wanted to check out his book, Clash of the Cultures, but just like Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk and Tools of Titans, I think is what it's called, by Tim Ferriss, there wasn't really an, I uh, last my check, there was not really like an audio version of it. So here we are, and investing is, it's kind of like health. It's something that I don't really listen to that many books on, but there is some overlap with other topics. I do listen to a lot of books on personal finance probably being the most notable. So when I listen to ones like this one, it's like listening to someone speak in a foreign language that you understand but not really fluently. Now to some people, this book might sound like a sales pitch on index funds. And honestly, <laughs> I think it is. I mean, it was written by the inventor of index funds and Investors fall short constantly because beating the market is a loser's game. Picking the right stocks and bonds is something I haven't even tried because I've heard such bad things about it <laughs> compared to this. But I do remember this interview I saw with Warren Buffett and the interviewer was like, do you have any uh, tips for picking stocks for me? And he basically said, you know, if you're looking for stocks to pick, don't. Simply invest your money into an index fund over time. What is an index fund? Well, you know how like a book has an index of all the different chapters? This is like an index of all the different companies in the Standard & Poor 500. And the author really swears by the S&P 500. By the way, he talks so much smack on speculation and like trading and stuff like that. Because of these corporations in the S&P 500, he speaks very, very highly of the corporations in America. What compliments our investors in America have to say about our uh, top companies? And I don't think the standard in Poor 500 is just American companies either. I'm pretty sure it's like, it's companies all over the world. But this is just what so many of us consider a counterintuitive approach. So many of us who like to buy what I like to think of as shackles and coffins, most people call them cars and houses, but, I, but, but there are exceptions, like a car or a house it's not a worthwhile investment. A car or house is not making you money unless someone is paying off the debt for you. But that's a very different video topic. The point is that you're better off selecting uh, mutual funds on the basis of long-term performance. And there's a chapter about smashing that like button in case you haven't already for the YouTube algorithm and ranking and SEO and all this other stuff. And I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos and how it's not always the right idea to, to, to trust a track record. Things went really well this time. Maybe they'll go really well next time. A lot of the most wealthy inve and successful investors in so many different like fields of event. I didn't even know there were fields of investment. Different, different areas and, 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 uh, and means of investing. Charles Schwab, uh, the owner of the Charles Schwab Corporation slash, slash bank, and, uh, who, who I switched my checking accounts to. Their checking account is amazing, dude. To David Swenson. That dude took Yale's endowment to a, like, unprecedented levels. And of course, Warren Buffett. So these guys swear by his approach, and why not listen to them? It's a good question. Why not listen to them, Sam? I mean, Grant Cardone and Mark Cuban have flung their own feces at this approach. I mean, that might be an exaggeration. I'm not entirely sure they hate it enough to throw their own bowel movements at it, especially nowadays with the whole COVID-19 situation that the world has found itself in. But their reasoning for disapproval is that you do not know what you are investing in. And, and this kind of makes sense. Like, it could be products and services that you seriously disagree with the ethics behind the pushing of. It could be cigarette companies. It could be uh, meat companies. What if you're super anti-cigarette 
Or what if you're vegan? Do you really want to support those things? That's their point. But if you want, you can look at everything you're investing in on the, you can look at the index of what companies you're investing in so you can see all the different companies. Knowing what you're investing in, their problem with this whole approach, if that's important to you, doing that and not having that problem is a proactive choice that you have the power to make. And before looking into it, honestly, I didn't even like consider that. He talks about the dark side of indexing and all about exchange trade funds, ETFs, and how those things tie into each other, as well as everything about Warren Buffett, uh, mentor Benjamin Graham's thoughts on index invest. I think he died in like the 70s or something. What would he have thought about it? I really like the chap the last chapter about serious money versus funny money and just having some of each, preferably like way, way, way more of the serious money and just putting them to work and seeing which one's more effective in the end. And he's constantly like, he's like, here, these are a bunch of amazing points on why index funds are the best choice. <laughs> for investing and don't take my word for it. And I'm not kidding, I heard him say, I heard the narrator say, don't take my word for it so many times in the book. And he ends by saying that he is certain that index funds will stand the test of time. Honestly, I think a better name for this book would be like the little, <laughs> the little index fund book or like the little book of index fund investing. I don't know, if you said index funds, it would not sound as sexy to people who know nothing about them at all. So I can kind of see where he's coming from with that. And overall, I don't think that you can listen to this book or read it and understand what he's saying and be like, well, this is stupid. I guess I'm just gonna stick to Robin Hood. <laughs> but let's hear what the negative reviews had to say. One review gave it two stars and said that it repeated endlessly. It offers sound advice on index investing, it definitely does, but the crux of the material could be summed up in 30 minutes, which I kind of agree with. I feel like he took the topic and inspected a bunch of different objections to it and concerns that people might have, like seeking advice on selecting funds, for example, and also competitors it's up against. And he did that and then he brought your attention back to what he is repeating and then he repeated it again and he's like, here, this is how these relate and disagree with each other and why. But then he repeats it again. Someone else said, who is the audience? This person, three stars, says that the books, the author spends 90% of the book arguing how amazing index funds are and offers no counter argument. He exp I mean, he explains index funds throughout the whole book. And honestly, if you can find a book that argues, that argues against index funds, be my guest and drop the name in the comments because I'm very curious. Time makes more converts than reasons. The way to wealth for those in the business is to persuade their clients, don't just stand there, do something. But the way to wealth for their clients in the aggregate follow the opposite maxim. Don't do something, just stand there. Don't look for the needle, just buy the haystack. When there are multiple solutions to a problem, choose the simplest one. Direction one. I recommend this book for anyone who knows a little bit about investing but doesn't really know what to invest in. Direction two. If you don't know anything about investing, don't get this book. Check out Unshakable or Money Master the Game. I recommend Unshakable by Tony Robbins. Unshakable's shorter and I don't know, I found it much more comprehensible. And then check out this book and then check out the Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. That book is crazy. That's the guy who I was talking about and like what would he think of it? index funds. The Little Common Sense Book of Investing by John C. Bogle. There's a link in the description if you guys wanna check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video, if you wanna check those out too. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below and also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because. I don't get why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe, but if you have subscribed and you want to turn it up just a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time, sugar, every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.